Welcome, everybody. I'm Neil Cavuto. And wound him because we can't kill him. That is pretty much the gist of what the president said today in Europe as he was outlining what to do about ISIS. Even at this late stage, we are going slow as they are clearly moving fast. Slow them because we can't stop them. After the brutal beheadings of two American journalists, the president said he was not yet prepared to order military strikes on ISIS strongholds in Syria. He argued he was still waiting uh, for support at home and abroad for such action. Well, I think he's been getting it over there. Australia, just the latest to indicate as much on top of Britain and even France. Maybe he's not reading the papers or following news here or networks here. But judging from just the Republican lawmakers I've talked to, he's got that support for stepped up attacks here as well. No matter. Here's something that I caught the president saying that uh, frankly does matter. And it frankly did stun me when pressed on whether his goal was the elimination of ISIS. The president quickly countered that he was merely trying to limit the group's reach, that he wants to degrade its capabilities, but pretty much told the world he can't kill off its capabilities. That is like saying that if ISIS were a business, he can't close its doors. All he can hope to do is make sure it doesn't get many customers. Well, good luck, because leaving aside ISIS's ample and very proven recruitment skills as a business, ISIS isn't only off and running, it is darn near racing, even as once feared competitors like Al-Qaeda are stumbling. ISIS is so implanted, so dug in, so well financed and so networked around the world that even if you hated it and even if it were a stock, now you might be tempted to sell it, but good luck delisting it because ISIS clearly has a lot of investors behind it, a lot of oil money at the rate of what, two million, three million bucks a day funding it and an uncanny, if not cruel knack for social media to market its message. So let me be clear. Their message is twisted and barbaric, totally without reason and even catastrophic. But it is unrelentingly consistent. They keep killing. We keep debating. I'd say as a business, ISIS? Well, in that respect, it is flourishing. To retired Major General Bob Scales on what he makes of this and the president's still very cautious approach, Bob. What do you make of that? Uh, I think it's misplaced. Look, uh, ISIS can't be defeated with diplomacy or with uh, 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 with coalition making or with sanctions. Uh, this is a killing organization that can only be destroyed by killing it. And you have to kill them where they live. Uh, Iraq is just peripheral to their mission. Their heartland, their head and their, and their brain, if you will, is in Syria. And the only way How you can you know strike that? it... How do you know that for sure, though? They've had oh, time to, to disperse themselves all over the world. I, I don't think there's any question they're recruiting, their headquarters, their financing, their training. Uh, all of that is centered around the city of Raqqa in Syria. Uh, that's where everyone seems to gravitate to join the ranks. Iraq is just is just an extension of the So you're saying ISIS that if we heartland. go after these Syria positions and we kill them all there, that they're not as much a problem there? Because I subscribe, and you're the expert, I'm not, but as you know, I read a prompter, so I think that qualifies me. But I, what I see is, is that... The, Terrorists are like cockroaches. You, you smash them in one area and they pop up somewhere else. Uh, ISIS is a little different. ISIS really looks more like a state than a terror organization, and therefore they have the vulnerabilities of a state. You can strike at their finances. You can strike at their training grounds. You can strike at their depots. You can strike at their sort of their political heart, and you can do it both with uh, air-delivered bombs. You can also do it with direct actions by special forces. Look, but you Neil, know what? If they're tempting that, they want that. They want to see that to bring up this great struggle with the West and with the evil Satan that is America. To, to get just that uh, unifying uh, response. I tell you, if we start blowing up ISIS and they start dying in large numbers, if we are successful in taking out their infrastructure and their middle management, their television monitors are going to go dark, Neil. No, this is about killing and this is about destroying them and not doing it. This isn't shock and awe. This is shock and awe done at a very, very slow pace. But they, you have to. T we have to take them down over time. And oh, by the way, to your earlier point, the only countries that can do this that have this special capability, precision and special operating forces, is either the United States or assisted to some degree by the United Kingdom and Australia. Well, we know That's that the United it, Kingdom and you know? Australia are closer to, to supporting right. just such a position. The president is not, or waiting, I guess, for this coalition to form. You yeah. argue time is not on our side, right? 
Right. Well, I mean, the bottom line is the enemy has a boat. We may not be at war with ISIS, but ISIS is at war with us. Mm -hmm. And eventually, the, the, you know, the, 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 the dogs of war are going to draw us into it, whether the president wants to join or not. My view is better strike them earlier rather than late and better to hit them at their heart rather than striking at the periphery. It's the difference between cutting off their arms or shooting them in the head. And their head, Neil, is in Syria, not Iraq. General, it's always a pleasure, sir. Thank you very, very much. Um, Thank you, Neil. All right, in case